Hi, so in this video, I'm going to teach you the most common fault on a failed or a dead laptop motherboard. So before diving into the common faults, let's first see how the laptop or the computer works. Okay, so as you can see here, we have the block diagram for the computer. Okay, so here, as you can see, we have the processor. Always the first chip here means the CPU. Here we have the CPU, as you can see, with the North Bridge. So the North Bridge is integrated with the CPU. Why? Because here we have this chip is connected with the memory, as you can see. We have here DDR2. Means the North Bridge is connected with the CPU because the chip that is responsible for managing the memory is the not bridge not the cpu not the graphic card okay so here we have the cpu plus the not bridge and here we have as you can see here the graphic card okay so this is the graphic card why this is the graphic card because the connection between ch these chips is as you can see the graphic port so the graphic port are connected to this part means this is the graphic card so we have lvds panel we have the crt we have the high definition media interface hdma okay means this is the graphic card then here we have the suit bridge or the ICH the input output control hub that is connected to all ports as you can see and connectors in the motherboard so how the laptop works so basically the CPU is the main component here okay it contains the brain of the CPU and the CPU as you can see, is connected directly to the North Bridge or integrate the North Bridge. So the task here in the laptop are separated. So for example, the graphic card manage and control the graphic section, as you can see. The ICH manage and control the input output in the motherboard, as you can see, all ports and connectors. And of course, we have here as you can see, the keyboard controller or the super I.O. As you can see here, this is the super I.O. or the super input output. This chip also controls some connectors like, for example, the touchpad connector, the keyboard connector and the BIOS. As you can see, we have here is PI ROM. This is the BIOS. Okay, so the tasks are divided. That's why the laptop works fine and without any issues and any problems. Okay, now what I want to teach you here is that for every, for every part here, it has its own circuit. For example, let's take, for example, the RAM, the random access memory here. The RAM has its own circuit that contain an IC, MOSFETs, inductor and capacitors. Okay, so the CPU itself contain its circuit inclu that includes IC, MOSFETs, inductor and capacitors. Okay, so the, the graphic card has its circuit, the suit bridge has its circuit, the keyboard controller, the fingerprint, the USB camera, all this part, each part here has its own circuit. Okay, so now when you understand that each part in the motherboard has its own circuit that contain an IC, MOSFETs or voltage regulators and inductor and capacitors in order to filter the current. Once you understand this, we can move on and see the real schematic here on real circuit. So let's go to the first circuit. So let's take this circuit, for example. This is the charge circuit where we have the charge IC and we have the two voltage regulators that will provide the necessary power to charge the battery. And of course, here we have the V in, the power jack. We have the power jack here and we have two switches. So please note that all circuits in the motherboard is just are just a duplicated circuits 
If you understand just one circuit, you can understand and analyze any circuit in the motherboard. The working principle is the same. Always, you will find a controller like this one, a controller IC, okay, the chief in the circuit, and you will find the voltage regulators, okay, and and after that you will find some secondary component that will make the signal a correct signal for example the inductor the inductor as you can see here this is the inductor always it has one purpose here in the laptop motherboard it adjusts and increases the current in order to get an enough current you will find of course some capacitors like those this is basically ceramic capacitors you can find sometimes electrolytic capacitor that is responsible to filter the signal to make the signal a pure signal and for electrolytic capacitor it make the signal a continue signal okay and of course the IC here it gives as you can see it gives the control signal to these two voltage regulators so I want first from you to understand the circuit and how things work in the laptop motherboard. After that, I will teach you the most common fault because if you understand the circuit, if you understand the motherboard, how the motherboard works, the connection between the components, you will not need, you will not need any explain about the most common fault etc you will use your brain and analyze the circuit and you can find out and isolate the problem instantly so here for example now let's talk a little bit about most component this is the first circuit in the motherboard okay so this is the first part where the input voltage or the 19 volt will enter or access to motherboard here because here as you can see here we have the power jack so then the voltage will goes as you can see directly and pass directly and follow this path this is the first switch this is basically a MOSFET but this MOSFET we call it switch because here we will we have 19 volt and here we will get also 19 volt here also we will get 19 volt here also we will get 19 volt so this is just switches okay just switches of course they will let 19 volt to pass to other side after receiving the control signal from its gate so i can see that the first common fault that i can encounter in a failed motherboard is these two switches this one or this one because if one of the switches are failed the motherboard cannot receive the power automatically the motherboard will be a dead motherboard that's why you should always check the input voltage using the multimeter you can check here do you get here 19 volt good check this side also if you get 19 volt good you should check this side also and check for 19 volt and then you should get here 19 volt if you don't get 19 volt for example here you should check whether this MOSFET receive the control signal or not if for example the control signal is not here means maybe you have problem with this transistor or this transistor or even this MOSFET okay so this is how you can analyze the circuit so let's assume that we get here 19 volt then the voltage will pass directly here okay and then as you can see here we will get the plus B we will get here the plus B the 19 volt that will be distributed to the whole motherboard to all circuit of the motherboards okay and of course this 19 volt will power also as you can see will power the ice as you can see we have ac this is the ac in okay so this ic has as a purpose to control these two mosfets in order to generate the necessary voltage in order to charge the battery so here in the circuit the common fault the component that 
can cause a dead motherboard are so the first one let's change the color here for example let's pick another color for example the black color okay so the probable cause of failure here are this MOSFET or switch this one also could create a bad problem so this IC as you can see this IC can be the cause of a failed or did motherboard because this is your charge IC okay so for those no because those has just as the purpose of creating the voltage for the battery but this MOSFET could be the cause of a dead motherboard why because it is connected to the ground once this one is connected to the ground the ic also will be connected to the ground as you can see and of course this component here as you can see those components as you can see are connected to the ground if there is anyone here that is failed or shorted the motherboard will be shorted also okay so let's move on to the next as you can see to the next circuit here we have another very important circuit as you can see here this is basically the 3 volt 5 volt circuit here as you can see we have plus 3 volt always and here we will get plus 5 volt always so the same working principle always we have as you can see here the b plus the main voltage as you can see over here and also here we have the main voltage so we have two channels here. this channel will generate plus 5 volt and this channel will generate as you can see here plus 3.3 volt and we have the IC so the most common fault here is the component that can cause the problem or a dead motherboard is first this MOSFET can cause a dead motherboard because it is connected to the ground the IC if the IC is shorted it can cause a dead motherboard by the way all ICs in the motherboards. If any IC or control IC are shorted to the ground, it can cause a dead motherboard. Here also we have this. This MOSFET could be the cause of a dead laptop motherboard. And also here, as you can see, we have this capacitor, electrostatic capacitor, and also this capacitor. This is electrostatic capacitors that has as a purpose to filter the current these are connected to the ground so all component that is connected to the ground could be the cause of a failed or dead laptop motherboards okay so this is you can apply this for all circuits okay so let's summarize a little bit but please don't forget to subscribe share and like the video please because your likes motivate me to create more and more videos for you thank you very much and of course for anyone who want to join me in the patreon page you are very welcome so let's summarize a little bit the most common fault on a laptop motherboard are first the power jack of course you should check the adapter first is the adapter good or not or the charger then the power jack you should check the power jack if the power jack is failed all the solders in the motherboard it, it can cause a bad or a failed motherboard then switches or mosfets in the input circuit and then to the charge ic and all ic's in the motherboard should be checked if any IC is shorted, it can cause a dead motherboard. And of course, we can add the BIOS, the basic input output system. If the program inside the BIOS is corrupted, it can cause a dead laptop motherboard. And of course, connectors. Okay, connectors, many of technicians neglect connectors. You know that connectors create more than 50% 50, 50 of failed motherboards due to connectors to damage connectors when you find pins are bended like for example usb connector hdmi connector vga connector rg45 connector etc you should always check whether connectors are okay or not then a bad battery a bad seamless battery or even battery the big battery can cause a dead motherboard that's why you should always remove the batteries so and of course you should always check the protection component like for example diodes 
in the circuit. You should check diodes, especially the diodes that are connected to the ground. Check also MOSFETs and capacitors. So this is basically the main thing about common faults in the motherboard. So I hope that you, that you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much. And please don't forget to subscribe. Share the video for, for other people like you. And like the video because your likes motivate me to create more and more videos for you. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.